By the power of Grayskull, we are the powerful Nerdcast. Hello, my friends. I'm Corey, and joined with me is Christian. Hello, everyone on the internet. Yes, guys, welcome to episode three of the Powerful Nerdcast. If you guys have not seen our second episode, it's out there. Go check it out. It's ridiculous. We talk about a lot of fun stuff like the Fantastic Four. But let's get relevant. Today is episode three, and we have a lot of cool things to talk about yes, because the we Super Bowl do. just ended. Yes, we do. Okay, Corey, since the Super Bowl just ended, neither of us really care about football. Actually, you may. What was your favorite ad, though? That's what favorite I Favorite really ad? Ask. That is tough. You know, it's funny you mentioned we're not really the biggest football fans. That's one of the main reasons I'm mostly tuned in for the Super Bowl at this point is to watch the commercials and That's to see all the like brand new trailers. That's the go-to move. You're like, I don't like football, but I'm going to go to the party and I'm going to enjoy the commercials. Basically. You know, I really didn't even care about the Patriots and the Seahawks all that much. I didn't want the Patriots to win, but you can't always get what you want. But as far as the ad go but you get what you need exactly rolling stones uh <laughs> you know it, it, it's hard because uh I, I liked the one tortoise in the hair ad mostly just because it was i didn't just, see that one you know uh, i like missed the whole super bowl and i just caught all the ads online so i think i'm still like uh gonna need to go back and catch them all what's that one though <laughs> i love that you, you just made a pokemon reference you didn't even mean gotta to. catch them all um it's 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 a car commercial where you know it's the typical tortoise in the hair everything is all like cg animals it looks like something out of a pixar movie is it the whole you know the tortoise is faster than the hair because he takes his time is that the uh, kind something of the- like that i actually forgot what brand of car it was altogether because <laughs> i was just so enamored by all of the uh, the cg creatures but uh you know it's the same take the tortoise wins but i love the way he does it because uh while the the hair is racing and getting ahead of him the tortoise is of course going slow and then he finds this like big car factory in the middle of this enchanted forest <laughs> well that's he where sees they this are amazing car gets inside what i love about it is he does this like dukes of hazard jump over the the rabbit and there's a female rabbit in the car <laughs> with the tortoise and i just thought that was really funny so it was really cartoony. Like gets the girl and the and wins the race basically yeah. kind of how it works in a new car all at once i don't know if he paid for it i don't, I don't know if they're letting them you know like finance yeah. on that shit i don't know if he just stole <laughs> that shit uh <laughs> grand theft auto mod coming out with exactly the, with the but uh, i thought it was a funny ad you know the mountain dew one where uh, everybody just starts dancing just very simple really the commercials were just kind of eh what about the Walter White one and the Liam Neeson one? That was um, both really good. Those are my two favorites. Yeah, they're definitely good. I just they're definitely I don't know. Good, they they seem they seem more like just like Internet meme commercials as opposed to like your standard. Well, That's what I think is happening. Advertising mm-hmm. understands that the Internet world is in some ways profiting more than television. Mm-hmm. So they're like, let's just tap into those markets. We'll make some goofy commercials. Everyone likes Liam Neeson and everyone, lo- you know, everyone's on that Breaking Bad dick. <laughs> Not lately, but it's like finally dying down, you know? Aren't they bringing that show back? No, it's just Better Call Sal. So they're just doing a prequel series with oh. some of the characters. Mm, everybody they, loves prequels. When they took like, Sal was a cool character, but I just never imagined a show all around him. So anyway, actually, <clears throat> my whole Breaking Bad history is really embarrassing. Not embarrassing for me, but I just want to get to the good part. So I just watched the first and the last seasons, and I was like, I'm good. I got it. <laughs> to hardcore fans of the series, that's <laughs> such extreme like blasphemy. Like, I'm, like not, ah! I'm a real casual fan of Breaking Bad, and that even kind of upsets me a little bit, you know? Well, I figured but out I mean, who uh, died because they weren't around by in the last season. So yeah. I, was like, I mean, no honestly, there, there really isn't much more to watch unless you really just want to watch for the drama of the entire show, which I still think is pretty good. It's definitely one of AMC's biggest hits. Yeah, from like the first episode, I wanted to know when uh, his brother-in-law was going to figure out who's a drug dealer. And, you know, they only got to that in the last season. So I was like, thank God I skipped all that other shit. <laughs> so what, what was actually going on in the Walter White commercial? Well, it was just him uh, as a pharmacist. But what happened is he was probably gathering supplies to um, cook his special blue brownies, yeah. whatever they are. Yeah. And uh, then a woman comes up and he just sort of in character because he's in the whole uh yellow jumpsuit with the <laughs> yeah. whole gas mask and all that jazz and she i was in a room up. full of people uh so when that commercial was on everybody was talking i just saw i was like what the heck is walter white doing on tv <laughs> yeah and then so she's just like hey you're not my pharmacist he's like i'm kind of your pharmacist and she's <laughs> like no no you're not he's like no i'm kind of your pharmacist and then he just sort of starts intimidating her and then she just leaves and then the commercial actually starts because it's all like hey you wouldn't want someone that's kind of here to help you out and i'm like ah oh, you bastards trying to sell me shit right there at the end but it was very entertaining and it's just kind of brian Car- brian cranston's a pretty funny guy so mm-hmm. i think that uh he, i honestly think his comedy is better than his uh his serious acting but uh I'm, I'm really glad good. that he's starting to get more like dramatic roles well he's just not typecast anymore he can do anything he wants mm-hmm. and i i haven't seen maybe i did see it but i searched up some of his more serious stuff like mm-hmm. uh the stuff he got the role in breaking bad because of being a villain in the X-Files once. Really? 
Do you know that episode? Because I've That's never seen that. That's insane. Yeah. I, don't, I don't remember that one. That you know, casting director got the Breaking Bad series. I think it was the producer mm-hmm. of that X-Files episode. And he went and said, I want Brian Cranston to play the lead in this show because of the stuff he saw and when he cast him in the X-Files episode. I don't know why I don't remember that because I'm a huge X-Files fan. And, uh, you know, they're even no bringing that, they're, they're even talks of bringing that show back. Whatever. Which Californication I think to, ain't doing so well. So, you know. <laughs> I mean, Californication, I think, is a good, well-written show. It's just... It's it's kind of like watching a train wreck in slow motion like 50 times in a row. It just nothing ever works out for the character in that show. I think that it's kind of uh, uh, uninspiring after a while. But you just said the writing was good. So it's just something I'm like, eh, if I know what's going to happen. My I only issue mean. with it is just it's so unbelievable. It's like, how does this guy keep getting out of these absolute ridiculous situations? And why does his family even give him the time of the day if he keeps betraying their trust constantly? Well, you're down with Seinfeld and you just pretty much decide, describe that show too. Pretty much. <laughs> it, speaking of which, it's funny that you mentioned Brian Cranston um, because yeah. I could have sworn I saw Brian Cranston playing a dentist on an episode of Seinfeld about a week and a half ago. That and exists. This was, That's real. It is? That's real. I've seen I, that online. Excellent. That's you good sure you because didn't just see a meme. You actually saw that episode. Yeah. You know, I don't actually keep up with the memes. As oh, much. I love like Imgur. I spend way too much time. Oh, on I know you spend a lot of time on Imgur. I mean, it's easy to spend time on Imgur, though. <laughs> just the funny images, the gifts. They're hilarious. It's the Internet throwing up creativity. That's mm-hmm. how I describe that website. Yeah. And everyone's like, what's that mean? I'm like, just just lose an hour on it and you'll never not want to go there. Yeah, again. That hour turns into four hours real quick. It's a black hole of time. I always am pulling it up here when you're trying to edit videos i'm like mm-hmm. look at this and you're like i'm fucking doing something man <laughs> it's distracting it is it um is. but uh let's get back to uh, super bowl commercials the commercials yeah. really nothing that special but the movie trailers oh dun, dun, dun. man there were some bombshells uh the one that definitely appeals to me the most the one i think most people are talking about is jurassic world yeah that's a big one man that's a huge one it's the first time that they've done a jurassic park sequel that feels like the real movie getting a sequel. Mm-hmm. It doesn't feel like something that they're just pumping out to. They're like, we got one of the actors from the old movie. We got this script approved. We got a couple million dollars. We're just going to make it and milk this. Like this. That is feel. exactly what happened yeah. in the lost world and in Jurassic park three. Now that, I think, you know, uh. I always used to kind of tolerate the lost world, but I mean, just you saying that, like we need an old original actor, Jeff yep. Goldblum. And in the third one, we need an old original actor, yep. Sam Neill. He comes back to his Dr. Alan Grant. And, uh, you know, just the fact that this new movie is kind of like in many ways, it's kind of a reboot, but not really. It's like they get as close as they can Mm -hmm. without calling it a reboot. Exactly. And then they just stop because I mean, the whole premise of this movie is it takes place, I believe, 22 years after the original film Mm -hmm. takes place on the original island. And it's been bought up by another company that decides to start making dinosaurs again. And apparently the dinosaurs in this movie are going to be more docile. That is until they create what is known as the Indominus Rex, which has been the the D-Rex. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) The uh, the big mysterious dinosaur for this brand new movie. And uh, before the Super Bowl, we didn't really have any big glimpses of it aside from some like leaked toy images and some like cups you can get at Burger King. But uh, what's really cool (laughs) is in this trailer, Lego pictures. Exactly. And uh, in this movie, they show it off and it looks awesome and they barely even show anything. Well, it's funny you say that because I don't think they showed off that much. I'll Mm -hmm. be honest. I was like, oh, they're going to show you it like across the screen and it never really comes. It's more Mm -hmm. like an above shot sort of and then a weird sort of shaky cam as it's like attacking a guy Mm -hmm. and then you see it out of focus as its claw like penetrates that uh big circular dome that people ride around in it seems like an awful idea for i you know every (laughs) single time i watch the trailer for it i see like the kids riding around in the orb and i don't know how that ride works like it it doesn't look like it's on a track at all but okay if it can get punctured by one claw why was it safe to be around those gigantic plant eating dinosaurs that could have crushed it (laughs) <laughs> that, that's a really good point that, that's bullshit. my whole point like during that scene and actually if you look at it what is interesting about this scene and they do this with trailers all the time which is amazing editing by the way um, when they actually show the scene while the stegosaurus and the triceratops is running past them mm-hmm. while they're in that big glass ball you can see they're visibly freaking out oh, yeah. but the music that's over the trailer is all majestic and amazing <laughs> welcome to Jurassic Park and these kids are just like ah! Ah! And there's like triceratops is about to like impale them from every direction. It's absolutely insane. And that's the one thing I loved most about the new trailer for Jurassic World Mm -hmm. is that we got some chaos. We got some destruction. Oh, yeah. And there are going to be thousands of tourists stuck on this island. Unlike the first movie, which was basically a test bed just to see how the park was actually going to work. The crew and six 
dudes. Exactly. <laughs> and there was one shot in the original trailer where they show all these people running uh-huh. and there's nothing around. And you're like, what the hell's going on? And this was an unfinished shot. And in this brand new trailer, we see all of these flying dinosaurs like pteranodons and this one new one called a dimorphodon, which What's is the normal teeny. one. What's the other one you always hear? Uh, yeah. I always hear pteranodon, pterodactyl, pterodactyl. you know, yeah. and uh, these new ones called dimorphodons, which are like these little ones with these little stubby beaks. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, that's just just the fact that they're attacking everybody, picking them up, taking them to their nests. But, but why are they? Here's the thing. OK, I got to watch the movie. Yeah. Why? All the uh, dinosaurs are obviously bred not to care about people. They're, mm-hmm. They just don't care. That's mm-hmm. kind of the way you make them not attack you. You make them not interested in you. Mm-hmm. So, and, and that's down to their DNA. And I understand that the uh, new dinosaur they're making may not follow those rules because they mix like five fucking different dinosaurs together and it came mm-hmm. out like a super raptor T-Rex. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but why are the other ones attacking them all of a sudden? Because they're not the weird ones. You, you, does that make sense? No, like, it why, does. It totally they... makes sense. Um, I understand why that one is crazy, yeah. but I don't understand. Now, it T-Rex. has not been fully confirmed yet that all of the dinosaurs on the island are going to be completely docile. Mm-hmm. In fact, if you remember, the uh, this is still the most controversial part of the movie. The scene in the trailer where Chris Pratt is actually training with the three velociraptors. Yeah. There's three of them right in front of him, and he's just making them stop by just saying, whoa, whoa, back up. And uh, I really like the attention to detail in that scene, and this is something that really hardcore Jurassic Park fans are going to notice. There's three raptors. There's one coming from the middle and two from the side. That's very true. And you were killed by the other two raptors. Yeah. didn't even know we're there. I love that reference, and they don't even have to say anything. That's really clever right there. But uh, that's going to be cool. Maybe he's literally training them to do a trick right there. Maybe they are getting real fearsome and up in his face. But clearly later on in the trailer, they're working together when he's riding on the motorcycle. Maybe there's like medicine they give the dinosaurs, and then shit goes bad, and they don't give them their medicine. That's a good idea. Like maybe there's like something they put in their food or a certain like shot they give them like every once in a while. And due to all the chaos, they can't receive their medication Thus, the island goes insane. Ugh, I'm so very excited because, like I said, it's pretty much the first movie mm-hmm. in a new setting. Yeah, with some with modern technology. Mm-hmm. But I am excited, and I think you are too, because the tone feels the same. Mm-hmm. It doesn't just feel like a cash in. Exactly. I mean, it's it's still a cash in, whether you want to admit that or not. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Jurassic Park is a very popular property. It's going to make the studio some money. Yeah. But at least the people behind it look like they're trying to make a good fun action summer blockbuster which is really what the original jurassic park was all about and i really hope it brings me back to being a kid um which when i was a kid saw that movie three times in theaters it blew my mind i will say that the uh the t-rex scene is something that i think that uh shaped most kids love of dinosaurs back in the day Mm -hmm. because that was like the most i still think it's the most intense dinosaur scene I think I've ever seen in a movie without a doubt just like, there's nothing that even comes close like mm-hmm. you can kind of say King Kong was interesting mm-hmm. but first of all he's not even a dinosaur what other there's those bad dinosaur movies where those raptors were attacking everyone and they had a like dino crisis or something like that's not even close though <laughs> are you talking about carnosaur carnosaur yeah carnosaur oh, isn't even close to jurassic i park. know about carnosaur because like you said w- when we were kids uh-huh. uh jurassic park made dinosaurs way more popular than they are they were like before. zombies uh last year exactly yeah and uh because of the popularity of jurassic park Every other movie company and studio was trying to make like their cash in, their cash grab, yeah. try to make their dinosaur movie. And that's what they did with uh, Carnosaur. And when you're a kid who loves Jurassic Park and you go to Blockbuster and you see a, a VHS box <laughs> with a big green velociraptor on it, you want to get it. You take it home watch and this. it ends up sucking. Not Hard. only does it end up sucking, but it ends up being way too inappropriate for you and way more violent than anything that's actually in Jurassic Park, which makes it even more <laughs> messed up. Um, it's still not worse than Starship Trek. Troopers 2. Let's no. <laughs> That's the worst. That's a whole nother beast. Oh, we won't even get into that, but don't but, even watch uh, that. Let's get back to Jurassic Park uh, for a second. Um, when you were a kid, were you a big fan of the movie? Like, I had the poster with mm-hmm. the uh, uh, T-Rex uh, standing on the flipped car with uh, it yelling into the sky with the tire on its teeth. That's how iconic that image is yeah. that you were able to describe it that perfectly. <laughs> I love that you mentioned the tire dangling off oh, of its yeah, jaw. Exactly. That's exactly what's going on in that scene. And you're right. That, that T-Rex scene is so good and a lot of it has to do with not only the fact that just the cg is combined with a night setting and rain but they use practical effects and practicals yeah and they built a t-rex puppet mm -hmm. 
there wasn't a there wasn't a miniature. They mm -hmm. built a full size T Rex puppet. Little fun fact for you: all yeah. of those animatronics and that stuff was made by uh, Stan Winston, who worked on a lot of famous movies like Predator mm -hmm. in the brand new Jurassic World movie. Yep. Stan Winston is not involved, but if you look in the scene where all the people are running away from the Pteranodons and the Pterodactyls, uh -huh. there is a restaurant that is called Winston's. Interesting. Yes. Let me take it a step further. Did you know that Adam Jones, the guitarist from Tool, worked on his team and helped make the Raptors? No. Yeah. Are you kidding me? He used to be a, uh, a set designer and make things like that. So from the original movie. From He also worked on Terminator 2 and helped design the uh, skeletons of, uh, of... That explains why they look so fucking awesome. Yeah, I know. So it's pretty funny that uh, one of our favorite bands, Tool, the mm -hmm. uh, guitarist, used to work on that. And he quit. Right after Jurassic Park and, Park and said, you know what? I think I'm going to like do this band thing full time. And everyone said, that's not going to work out. <laughs> <laughs> History will tell us <laughs> things went just fine. So not only did this guy create one of the most badass dinosaurs of all time. Yes. But he's also part of one of the greatest uh, rock bands of all time. Yes. And he designed the T-shirt with uh, the cops T-shirt for the T-1000 uh, with the bullet holes in it. Like oh, he really? designed like a vest or something like that. You put The ones on. that have like the metal puncture like, yeah. holes yeah, all yeah, over yeah. his body. All that shit. So oh, that looks so cool. I just showed my girlfriend Terminator 2 for the first time because she oh, never yeah? saw it. And I was like, you've got to watch this. I can't believe you've never seen it. And she's like, you yeah, know, I guess it wasn't part of my childhood. And I was like, oh, I was raised on Robocop and Terminator. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so. Movies that we should not have seen. When we were <laughs> no, you know, I don't even. I never even I should saw. Not have seen that. I never even saw Terminator Two. Like when I was really young, I actually didn't even really see it until I was probably about ten years old. The thing is, when I was a kid, like during like 1990, 1991, like when it was coming out. Yeah. Uh, they released these action figures from Terminator Two, which is just. Oh yeah. Why would you release a line of action figures with an R-rated film? Despite that, I had a an action figure of the Terminator back uh -huh. in the day. Like it had this like metal attachment that you could put on his arm that like looked like this big metal claw and half of his face was gone. You could see the skull. Never even saw the movie. It was awesome. I had him fight my Ninja Turtles. I made him there a villain. You go. Uh, but it wasn't until later that I saw Terminator and it just blew I think, my I mind. I think Terminator 2 and like Predator were a lot of people's first R movies for our generation. Yeah, yeah. I didn't see Predator until I was about 10 either. Yeah, Predator you know? was the shit. But this, it's then. the same situation. Yeah. Like, they make those what are these cool figures? action figures? <laughs> these <laughs> are, are awesome. From? There's a movie of this? They don't do that anymore. They stop doing that ultra violent stuff that sneaks by and then they advertise to kids. Mm -hmm. Sort of. No, Transformers not anywhere near any of that shit. Mm, no, no, not at all. No. But uh, one more thing for Jurassic Park. Um, we've already seen a lot of the dinosaurs which are going to be appearing in the movie. Yes. Do you have a specific dinosaur you want to see make an appearance or do something? Well, obviously, we have spent probably a majority of our time talking about the T-Rex from the first movie. So mm -hmm. I think he... Uh, finding the T-Rex versus the D-Rex is something that I... Or the, uh, it's a uh, funny thing, uh, before you, uh, finish, uh, it was originally known as the D-Rex or yes. the Diabolus Rex, which uh -huh. I still think sounds awesome. Um, sounds it's like new a name. mad scientist created it. The Diabolus Rex. <laughs> Aye, the evil Dr. Diabolus! <laughs> exactly. Wow, it totally does. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the new name is actually the I-Rex or the Indominus Rex. Oh, it's I-Rex now? Yes. Well, I'm still gonna call it the D-Rex because mm -hmm. I think that sounds way cooler. No, it does. It sounds yeah. cool. It's just fun to say. Indominus. Dude got derexed. He got derexed, yo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I am excited about seeing uh, the T Rex versus the endogenous endogenous Rex. I want to see that, and I also want to see the. Uh, I want to see the the. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep calling him the derex. I want to see the derex get eaten by that big ass thing. That they show in the trailer that eats the uh, oh the big water dinosaur. I think that would be the ultimate. The D Rex and him are fighting on a cliff. Sunset. It's beautiful. Wide shot, and then the the, the ground crumbles beneath the D Rex, and he falls. And before he hits the water, he just gets eaten. You you like just combined <laughs> the ending of Land Before Time. <laughs> <laughs> Jurassic Park is fantastic. And Peter Pan, because he gets eaten by a crocodile. At the That's end. true. We'll just throw that in there. That's true. For a little game. Um, I would like to see the Mosasaurus do something like that. The big water dinosaur. That would look really cool. Um, the one dinosaur the I want to see. Of course, see... you know all their names. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a dinosaur. Dude, when I was younger, the one thing I originally wanted to do was be a paleontologist. Okay. I was, Dude, I was so into dinosaurs. That's why I loved Power Rangers so much, too, because yeah. it was all themed around dinosaurs and ninjas that's the coolest shit ever as a kid yeah that's a pretty good combo you know but uh favorite dinosaur for me is actually a dinosaur which has not appeared in a jurassic park movie since the first one and that is the dilophosaurus which is the spitting dinosaur oh, yes. which has the venom the one that killed uh newman, newman! in the first movie <laughs> and uh, i don't know why i want to see that one again maybe just because it only appeared once and it's so mysterious and cool and i love that <laughs> 
sound it makes, and it's just, it's so vicious. I don't want to see, like, ten of those things just running around, pow, pow, hawking loogies on people's faces yeah, and shit. those have also got to be dangerous, like, raptors. Mm -hmm. But they just happen to get this cool sort of peacocking thing, you know, yeah. and they spit. So that's actually seeing one of those in action. If you think about it now, the way they shot them, you didn't see it really mm -mm. at all in the original movie. Barely at all. And it's mostly an animatronic. That's what I was going to say. I'd say 90% think... of the time that thing is almost always an animatronic. Yeah. And uh, the funny thing is the Dilophosaurus in that movie was just a baby. Real Dilophosauruses are huge. Oh, like really? They're like the size of a freaking giraffe. So that's oh, wow. why I'd love to see some full size and baby Dilophosauruses. Maybe because they're genetically engineered, they're small. They never really got into that. But I just I want to see more of those guys. I, I want to see no them idea. running around and just spitting their black goo all over the place. No little dinosaurs that kill people slowly while chasing them through the woods. None of that shit. That no, I don't. I never liked those guys. No, I, I, you know, and that's the one dinosaur like its name I can't pronounce. And it looked like shit as an animatronic. Do you remember that? Yeah, when they were covering his body and just like, oh, only the head is moving, and it just it, it looked bad. It was not very convincing. Not you good. know, the Lost World definitely had its uh, its good moments and I its thought bad moments. Them hunting the uh, the T Rex was really cool. They were mm -hmm. like the dude, the badass hunter guy that looked mm -hmm. like he's killed every that was big the, cat Why was the movie just about the engine team yeah. like trying to hunt the dinosaurs? I didn't, you know, I understand why they brought back Jeff Goldblum. He was a main cast member from the first one, yeah. and he's a big time <laughs> actor. Exactly. <laughs> uh, 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 yes. Uh, but uh, uh, y yes, Jeff Goldblum. And uh, there's a lot of rumors that even some of those guys <laughs> might make like a cameo Before, appearance. In the uh, what's that fucking quote? Uh, you didn't ask. You just did it because you could. You didn't ask if you should. Oh, yeah. It's uh, the big quote where he like just blows up on John Hammond. Yeah. He's like, before you even knew what you had, you patented it, you packaged it, you slapped it on a plastic lunchbox and you want to sell it. You're selling it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> he just he has so many amazing quotes from that movie. There, there are meme videos of him just going ha, ha, for like two hours. <laughs> it's ridiculous. He's like up there. The random people, the Internet like it's Jeff Goldblum, Nick Cage. Who else? Is Christopher it? Walken. Christopher Walken. Like the Internet just loves random Arnold people. Schwarzenegger. They're Arnold. actors who've transcended themselves as actors actors and you don't go to the movies to see the characters they play you don't you go, to, go see them. to see samuel l jackson play a character you go to see samuel l jackson in new situations base <laughs> <laughs> that's a really good way of putting it you, you know? know i think he is doing a good nick fury i just still can't separate the fact that that's sam jackson bitch right that's there. him on the screen it's him with an eye patch it's him uh i bet in that uh the new movie uh League of Gentlemen. What is mm -hmm. that new movie coming out? Uh, the, the Kingsman, Kingsman, I think, which is he like plays the, the, the Academy guy. for James Bonds. He plays the bad guy. Yeah. But he has a lisp. They're yeah. like, oh, we, I bet they had to fucking negotiate the shit into that, into his contract. Oh, you actually want me to like play a character with like a voice and shit? Actually, he does play a really good character in Django Unchained. I thought his character in that movie was <laughs> fucking brilliant. Yeah. He, 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 now, by the way, I am not saying Samuel L. Jackson is a bad actor. He can be himself in every movie from now on because I'm fine with that. Actually, it's very I think he's earned that at this point. Uh, what about – can we change the uh, subject uh, for movie trailers? Mm -hmm. uh, not movie trailers. Get off Jurassic Park. Go to the new uh, Terminator. New Terminator. Okay, yeah. Genesis. Genesis. Genesis because yes. it's spelled S-Y-S -S at the end. And I'm thinking about this because I cannot get over the fact that they did a really good job making the chick that plays Khaleesi – look like a young Sarah Connor. Because I watched Terminator 2, mm -hmm. and I swear to God, if you pause that movie in certain places and look at Sarah Connor, uh, that actress really does look like whatever they did. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I bet there's some makeup involved. I bet the hairstyle, all that stuff comes into play. You know, there's so much movie magic out there in so mm -hmm. many ways. But she looks just like a young Sarah Connor. So I was like very impressed. But the Terminator sequels have always suffered from over CGI in it. Mm -hmm. Or over Michael Baying it? You know, like, I don't know. It's how hard to, to say because technically Terminator 2 sort of started that, you know, I mean, the but, CG was minimal. It was pretty much just used for the T-1000 sequences. Yes. And everything else was practical. Um, but I know what you mean, because, you know, T-3, not a bad movie, but it's definitely filled to the brim with a lot of like big CG explosion fests, which sort of take you out of the moment. That one that scene was trying to be so cool. Remember when he was like on the crane truck and then it gets thrown through a building mm -hmm. and he's hanging on to it and it's cool and it's kind of like harkening back to the uh, uh, 
him getting chased by the semi and the drain. And now LA. that's my biggest problem with the scene. It is a cool scene, but every single time I'm watching it, I'm like, this is just like the scene from two. Yeah. And two is more exciting. And, but you know, threes was bigger, but not mm-hmm. better though. Yeah. It wasn't that, that scene sucked actually. It mm-hmm. wasn't half as good. And, and now in Terminator Genesis, we have a scene on a bridge where a freaking school bus gets flipped, flipped up over. on its back. Haven't seen that before dark Knight. but like, oh. I'm just, I'm really interested to see where Calm that's going to go. Oh, and the same thing. Speaking of Jurassic park, remember the scene in the lost world where all the T-Rexes knocked them over the side of the cliff. Same thing's happening in Terminator Genesis where the school bus is over the side yeah, and Terminator has to save him as it, as it falls all the way through to the ground. But there's always... How many scenes are there p- scenes where there's people hanging from things and they're holding hands holding each other? Oh, Spider-Man. God. What else you got? We got Spider-Man. I don't uh, want to name them all. The but Indiana, I... Every Indiana Jones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Temple of Doom, that shit. The point is that's a really famous shot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think even... Uh, uh, Planet of the Apes did it. Uh, the James Franco one. Yeah, you know, yeah, they the did. Bridge. Where the guy uh, was in the car, and, and then the, the, the evil ape came over, and then he let him fall. Or the helicopter scene. Yeah, where the evil ape, the scarred ape, uh, mm-hmm. came over to the black. And that when the gorilla just roar and jumps in and starts just destroying yeah. everything. Yeah, and they shoot him yeah. a whole bunch, and then he dies like a man, a man gorilla. That was awesome. <laughs> a gorilla. A gorilla. Uh, that doesn't sound as manly. No. Uh, then, uh, so yeah, I'm very excited about the new Terminator. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my dad loves those movies, so he was very excited when he saw that. He I wish sure. my parents liked Terminator. He was like, oh, about that. That's yeah. totally not their type of movie. I mean, you know, just the fact that Arnold's coming back, mm-hmm. you know, I'm hopeful. I'm really interested in the story because uh-huh. it's uh, going back to like the roots of the story. They're like, this is another one of those like, it's a reboot, but not really. You know, like they're it's changing. It's a retelling. Exactly. They're is changing that, the Does events. that not piss off the fanboys as much if you call it a retelling? Oh, dude, people the... are really angry about Terminator Genesis. But mostly bad. over the name of the movie. Mostly too bad because Arnold's going to keep riding that. Yeah. I think I think Arnold, uh, I think after like, I'm getting obviously very personal and I have no idea because I don't know Arnold. Mm-hmm. But I feel like after he got a divorce, man, he just didn't care. He's like, I'm going to go back to making movies now. Mm-hmm. After he got done being the governor and uh, him and his wife split, I feel like he was like, fuck it. I'm going to do movies. I'm running that train in and one of my favorite things arnold has done recently was that youtube ad do you remember that back in the day yes. where he was wa- i forget what that was called may 5th mm-hmm. or uh, i forgot and they even wrote it with his accent mm-hmm. i don't know why that ad was so funny but it was just really well made do you- it, it was just arnold being arnold is what it was you know he's they were playing to his to his strengths which like we said he's one of those actors where you don't go to see his character you go to see arnold Unless it's Terminator. Yeah. In which case, <laughs> really, that is the best role he's ever played because it does. I, and I'm not taking a jab at his acting skills, but it does play to his strengths. Mm-hmm. You know, he plays that role really well. Um, I kind of hope they scale he's a back, big though. Physical presence that doesn't need to say much. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Which, and that was sorely missing from Terminator Salvation. We won't. Even, we didn't even mention that for good reason. Okay. And do you know if Genesis is going to be rated R, or if it's going to be rated PG thirteen? I don't know. I'll look like, it up real quick. Because I mean, that's that to me really could make or break this movie. You know, I'm not saying that violence makes the movie or like all those big uh, action scenes that have blood all over the place is really what's going to make your Terminator movie a Terminator movie. Um, but it certainly makes it a more visceral experience, and it gets you more sucked in. You know, especially that first movie, which, you know, was great. And then Terminator 2, which there really isn't all that much blood. A lot of it's implication, but there are still some freaky ass scenes in that movie. Like when T-1000 is stabbing John Connor's stepmom through the freaking eye with, with the... It, it was his stepdad. Was it the stepdad? Come on, Corey, get on the... Get on. Uh, I haven't watched Terminator 2 in like... <laughs> it was a, it, I feel... So, this is really nerd. I haven't watched Terminator 2 in like a month. <laughs> <laughs> that shows how much of a nerd you are. Corey. Yeah, I watch it at least twice a year. You know, it's definitely one of my, like, I have to watch this this year kind of movies. I just, I love Terminator 2. I still love the first Terminator a lot. Ah, it's fucking PG-13. Is it? Yeah. Ah, that's a bummer. I know. It should be dark. Ah, it really needs to be. And, you know, that doesn't mean a PG-13 movie can't be dark. You know, anything can be. We live in the age where shit just has to be fucking dark all the time. But, like. Batman. You know. (laughs) In the darkness. But, I mean, uh, I don't know. It just, it needs that edge. I think to really, you know, and the main reason they're probably doing this, you know, they got to put butts in seats and they got to make money. And Wait, probably did you sell- say they're only doing this for the money, Corey? No way. <laughs> no way, bro. No. Yeah, they're definitely doing this for the money. Let's yeah. Be honest. I mean, there really wasn't any need for a Terminator, especially like this one, which is a reboot slash retail. Here, here's what I'm OK with. They they pull this one off and then they leave it alone because the last one can't be the last you know, yeah, just, you know, just patch it up as good as you can and then get out of there. As long as it's better than salvation, I will feel a little bit better about the Terminator franchise. Mm-hmm. 
You know, I mean, salvation Arnold, doesn't Arnold like can go walk off into the sunset and die a happy actor because his tar- his fucking legacy wasn't tarnished by that shitty Batman Terminator, whatever it was. <laughs> the Mister Freeze. The Mister Freeze. Yeah. No, well, that's a whole nother issue. We don't even oh, need yeah, to go yeah, there. Yeah. Okay. What what other uh, ter- uh, movie trailers were there? Uh, movie trailers. You know, there was uh, one other one which is Tomorrowland, which is like the next big Disney movie. Which honestly, I'm not excited. I don't remember for. that. Describe. Um, it. it was a real short trailer. It was like a teaser trailer. Uh, you, have you ever been to Disney World or Disneyland? Yeah, I've done it all. You remember the whole Epcot like Center, the Tomorrow World? So basically, like the Land of Tomorrow. It's oh, like the in future. In the future, exactly. Yeah. They're basically making a movie of that. Which in, in the future? Yeah, you know. Okay. Basically, they're like, hell, it works with Pirates of the Caribbean. Let's try it with another one of our movies. And honestly, that's all I have to say about it. I'm just not really all excited about it. What's it, it called? Tomorrow World? Tomorrowland or Tomorrow World? Tomorrow World is a big fe- music festival. So. Well, I am sorry for. I'm not going to. They're not do, making a movie about the music festival. I'm not, um, yeah, I'm not going to go do ecstasy and watch bad music. <laughs> but, uh, you know, really, the biggest trailer was Jurassic World. That was the one that I think a lot of people were waiting for. Um, I was kind of hoping maybe there would be something with uh, Avengers Age of Ultron. But considering we just got like a big brand new trailer for that, yeah. it's expected that we probably wouldn't get anything. The like subtitle that. is The Future Awaits. The Future Awaits. Tomorrowland? It's Tomorrowland. Tomorrowland. The Future. Who's in it? Uh, I don't know. Like, I can't even remember. It was that generic to me. Uh, it just, it looked like just a big CG, what the 1950s envisions as the future. That's what it looked like to me. <laughs> like, just This looks crazy. like a Hunger Games type thing. Oh my God, I'm so tired of the Hunger Games stuff. I haven't trilogies. even seen the new one because I heard it wasn't as good. But you know why I think so many people were disappointed? Because mm-hmm. it wasn't about the Hunger Games anymore and it broke the formula. Mm-hmm. So you have people that have gone seeing pretty much the same movie twice just with new drama in between the fighting not to mention all the copies of those movies you know we, you know not only do we live in the i age watched of the, the shitty uh, parody of the hunger games i forgot what it was called there was the a, starving there was, games <laughs> it was so bad dude was it's that a, like a scary movie yeah version? it was so bad it was it already released of, Oh, a long time ago. Dude, I, I didn't even see a commercial for it. That must have tanked. That, it, it was on Netflix. And I was like, Dana, we really just got to see this. Let's just watch it. And she's like, no, I don't, oh, I've never heard of these type of movies. And I was like, no, it's okay. And like, I could only get halfway through it with her. And then she's like, we're turning this off. But it was just so tongue in cheek and retarded. But it was funny to me. Mm. You know, I, I love that shit. Mm, that's, that's the big trend right now. These reboots, mm. these remakes, and these young adult trilogies are the, uh, the brand new movies. All based on young adult novels. Insurgent or... Yeah. Divergent. Divergent. It started with Harry Potter. Then we got yeah. Twilight. And now we're on the Hunger Games. Divergent. They just had this maze movie come out. And they're all the freaking same. Post-apocalyptic universe. Bunch of multiracial kids killing each other. Ooh. Throw in a big robot or a monster or something. And then make sure that the last movie is uh, split into two movies. George Clooney is going to be in Tomorrowland. George Clooney. And then a whole bunch of... I wouldn't say unknown. Yeah, speaking not. of Mr. Freeze, there's Batman right there. Oh, we got a, uh, we got a, uh, uh, the guy that played House. It's gonna be in it too. Really? Yeah. Okay, that's kind of cool. Hugh Laurie, I believe. Hugh Laurie. Yeah. yeah. Hugh Laurie's awesome. I like him. Yeah, he's a cool guy. Mm-hmm. I actually really like him. He'd make a good, uh, not Kempachi, but who's that guy that uh, is in Bleach? Orahara. Yeah. Good everybody Orohara. says that he'd make a great Kisuke Orahara. He pretty. Him and House are very similar, actually. Mm. <laughs> so. Speaking of Netflix, I just watched a Bronies documentary and I found mm. that to be so intriguing because you're like, OK, if it's following the I'm forgetting her name, but it's following the main voice actress who does, um, I think, Rainbow Dash and uh, which is the one that has a rainbow on it. <laughs> and then uh, what is <laughs> and then and uh, the whole documentary is really interesting because you're like, well, obviously this community that this community of bronies, which if you don't know what a brony is, it is a male most likely that is a fan of the new rebooted my little ponies, which I think started in 2013, maybe earlier. And they are called bronies and they're from the age of 18 to 40. And they are fans of my little pony bros that like ponies, bronies, (laughs) (laughs) which actually started in 4chan. That's where the community came to be. That's That's, where all crap usually starts. That's where that's like the, uh, a uh, mortal sludge of the internet. Then things crawl out of there and take hold. <laughs> they take full. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, uh, don't go to 4chan, please. It's not worth your time. And uh, so <laughs> anyway, uh, it's just really funny because these people that are inside the world of making the show, the voice actors, the 
the creative directors and things like that. It's mostly following this one voice actress. Uh, they don't, they're not like in control of that thing. You know, mm -hmm. they're just like, Oh, I just had this dude stalking me. Like they're like just people getting affected by this, this wave of a community that has been created because of it. And, uh, the main voice actress is also like in a band and the bandmates don't care at all about my little pony, but all the people that are coming to their shows are bronies. And they're like, Oh, we don't really know how to deal with this man. And then the documentary sort of shifts, which I found very funny. Uh, and I'm not making f – let, let me – Corey, I don't hate My Little Ponies. Yeah, you do. I, That's why you're giving me this this preemptive apology. No, no, no. I don't hate it because I've never watched it. Yeah. So I got to be honest. I've yeah. never seen it. I've never watched more than five minutes of it, and I just do not get the opinion. I don't need it in my life. I yeah. have enough things I really enjoy doing, and I yeah. don't need that shit in my life. And I guarantee you, even if it's great, I'm just not going to invest the time in it. Mm. Anyway, but what I'm saying is – I got too much shit to do to guys. Okay. I got a lot of shit to do in my life. Um, but what the uh, documentary then shifts to is looking at the bronies in detail halfway through. And I found it really interesting because it's just a whole bunch of manly dudes trying to defend themselves. <laughs> It's like in the documentary, yeah. they're like, you know what? To make this as entertaining as possible, <laughs> let's go up to every dude who's like jacked as hell yeah. and like ask them why they, they like, like my Brody's. little pony. The first guy they bring out is a guy that's in a motorcycle kind of gang. He's like a motorcycle mechanic. He's Did he have a up. patch like with a pony on it? Yeah, of course he did. His leather jacket had a pony on it. <sighs> and, you, you know, Rainbow Dash, you know, of course. Was it like like a cool pony that was like on fire with like a skull on its face because he was a biker? Or <sighs> was it like pink and shit? There and was had some... like a cupcake on its ass? Uh, uh, probably most likely <laughs> ask cupcakes most likely. Uh, and the thing that I also found really funny is they also talked to dudes that are kind of, um, I related a lot to these guys cause they started a fan page mm -hmm. for Brony news and, or anything to do with my little pony. It's very much like us. You know, we release videos all the time about anime stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I was just kind of like, Oh, that's so interesting. You know? And they were telling me how they grew and how they went from like, Whoa, we got a thousand views a month. And then before, uh, over the period of, their whole website, they now get like close to 2 million a month. And I was just like, holy shit, you guys get wow. 2 million hits a month off Brony news. Damn. You know, and it's just full of fan art and stuff. And it was just funny because you kind of expected, um, the voice actor to be a leader of this group in some mm -hmm. ways, like take charge and know what's going on. But it's so funny, this ecosystem, this whole fan base appeared around her and she doesn't even know how to react to it. It's, I just found the whole thing because, you know, I thought it would almost be focused around her going and like interacting, mm -hmm. but it's like literally the, one of the main story arcs of the documentary is her deciding whether or not she wants to go to her first brony con and like deciding whether or not she's ready for it. Well, she, not, she might need some bodyguards. If she's gonna do that type of crap. <laughs> I mean, I don't even think the creators of the series like even knew what they were going to have. Like when they did, they're like, oh, we're going to we're going to revive My Little Pony, classic franchise from the 1980s. Little girls are going to love it. We're going to sell some toys and it'll be really good. We'll make some money and be happy. Yeah, I don't think they expected all these older fans to jump on board. And a lot of that does have to do with the fact that a lot of cartoons nowadays, a lot of the writing staff, they're trying to like make it for both kids and adults. I mean, you know, Which I is don't doable. like Shrek, it is. Shrek, Shrek. It Shrek's is very example. doable. Um, you know, I do like uh, some cartoons. You uh -huh. know, I don't like My Little Pony, but I do like Adventure Time. Adventure and Time's great. I do like this other show on Cartoon Network called Regular Show, Never which seen it. makes no sense. It's literally a show about two slackers who just got out of college who both happen to be a raccoon and a uh, blue jay. They never announce, they never like bring that up either. They interact with regular people. It's just, that's just what they are. And it's just about the crazy adventures they go on. And uh, every single time I tell people, I'm like, oh man, regular show's great. And they're like, oh, that's just that stupid stoner show on Cartoon I Network. always hear everyone's described as a stoner show. Yeah, and I don't get what they're saying. Maybe it's because it's just, it's so weird and just describing a single episode is impossible. Um, but it's a like really funny show. It's well written and the kids will like the animation and the adults are going to laugh their asses off. The other thing, uh, also, uh, What's that Steve and Marty or Morty? Rick and Morty that, on that Adult is amazing. Swim is so good. That show is really good. Definitely check that out. Rick and Morty. It's like an alternate universe of uh, Marty. <laughs> and Marty and, and Doc Brown from Back to the Future. Yes, and that is literally what it is. It's Which uh, it's actually based on these uh, old cartoon shorts that were on the internet years ago called uh, The Adventures of Doc and Marty. Which uh -huh. was same thing. It was a yeah. uh, basically a, a riff on Back to the Future. And the original shorts were like a minute long, super crudely animated. Same voice actors, but the premise of them was so awful. Here, let me just, I got to <laughs> oh run this down for I've you. I've seen the show already. It's already pretty awful. Like, it's like, oh shit. Really All right, well, I don't think 
you saw this on Adult Swim. No. The first episode of Doc and Marty, the entire premise of the show is that Marty gets his Frisbee stuck in a tree and he has to try and get it back. So the Doc's plan is we're going to go back in time and we're going to stop this tree from ever being planted so that your Frisbee could never go in that tree. The only way they can go back in time is if Marty sucks <laughs> the Doc's dick, which is covered in blood. That's the first episode. Someone at Cartoon Network saw this and they're like, that would make a great late night show. We need to get that on the air immediately. And like, I saw that and I was just like, oh my God, this is so fucked up. But it's like the same people, same style of voice acting. It's just got this really, really gross angle. And what I love most about it is they gave a lot of creative freedom to the creator of the show. Yeah. And you can definitely see that. And it's one of the first Adult Swim cartoons that's like a full 30 minutes long. The only other one I could think of is maybe like, uh, Venture Brothers and some Metalocalypse episodes. I'm not saying the writing is the best I've ever seen, mm. but it's also it is good. It is it has a beginning, middle, and end. Yeah, and it's like, sharp it's, and it's just very good story. It's well telling. animated too, yeah, very which good. is surprising. I, I always uh, I just watched an episode and it was about uh, Marty, not Marty. Morty. Morty. Yeah, they did, they did change the name for yeah. that real show. <laughs> Morty uh, trying to get this girl to like him and trying to take her to a school dance. So he comes up with a uh, – he talks to his uncle or his grandfather. What? Who is he? Is yeah, he, it's his grandpa. Yeah, he talks to his grandpa about uh, coming up with some love potion. He's like, yeah, here's some hormones that someone likes. You know, it'll make him go crazy for you. And then everyone in the school ends up falling in love with him and trying to, like, rape him. And I'm like, whoa, what is this? This is a cartoon, dude. Whoa. You know? I mean, it is on Adult Swim. Yeah. Well, it is. And I keep forgetting that because almost all of a sudden I think I'm watching some Saturday morning cartoon and then the, the whole thing gets real dark. That's, That's what, what tricked me with the first episode because uh, the first time I watched it, it was when it first premiered on Adult Swim and I was like, okay, this is pretty funny, um, but it, it, it doesn't seem that risque. It doesn't almost seem like something that should be on Adult Swim and then five minutes later <laughs> just there's this scene where they're like gunning down these aliens in this really violent scene and then the doc is like alright Morty I need you to take these big mega scenes All right, Morty. and I need, I need you, you to shove them way up your butthole Morty <laughs> shove them way up your butthole and he's just like oh man I don't think I can do this uh, <laughs> and alright like, Morty <laughs> it just, oh, it's so funny and the voice acting is great in fact the guy who actually voices uh, Rick is uh, his name is Justin Roiland. He actually voices a really popular character on Adventure Time. You might have heard of him, uh, Lemon Grab. He's the oh. guy with the big lemon head. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's also on this old cartoon that we used to watch all the time online, which was called Mr. Sprinkles. Oh shit! You remember Mr. Mr. Sprinkles? Sprinkles? Mr. Sprinkles. And Mr. that Sprinkles. entire animation was actually done by that same team. And even uh, Justin Roiland, the voice of Rick and Morty, uh, voices uh, Mr. Sprinkles. I and when you hear that, totally it'll blow your mind. Think. Uh, Doc and Morty or whatever it is, is just like Mr. Sprinkles. Now that you said that, that mm -hmm. connection is so apparent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That animation, go watch the uh, mini series, Mr. Sprinkles. It's a really twisted look at cat in the hat. Mm -hmm. And you're like, that's really, it'll kind of, it might fuck your day up, but it's worth watching. <laughs> 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 it's pretty good. But I love that. It's a success story in animation. You can see this Justin Roiland guy has actually been working for a long time trying to get a show, mm -hmm. doing voices, and now he's got a hit show on Adult Swim, which has just been destroying the ratings. The Blu-ray DVDs have been selling so well to the point I almost want to get the first season, and I rarely buy American animation to rewatch. It's that good. I love it. I'm a big sci-fi geek, so that's why I really appreciate it, too. Yeah, yeah. And the the along with uh, cool stations like Cartoon Network and the mm -hmm. Internet, I think we have like unlimited amount of awesome things to watch all the time. And like Netflix and is Netflix. Netflix is obviously the Internet, but it's almost mm -hmm. like Internet TV or like how do you. It's evolving into that. It's becoming yeah. like the Internet HBO. Internet HBO. That's a good mm -hmm. way to put it because they're also making their own stuff. And House mm -hmm. of Cards is the shit. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Marco Polo. I powered through that first season. Yeah, you, you let me watch a little bit of that last week, which yeah. is honestly pretty beast. It's good stuff. You know, I liked it. And then what else have they made? They, they got made a brand new Marvel show coming out. Orange Daredevil. Is, and Orange is the New Black, which is an intense show, yeah. which don't let a woman's prison show make you think it's not fucking dark and shit. Like it's, it's really dark actually. Well, that, that shit's messed <laughs> up. You, you ever seen those shows called scared straight? I watched my first episode on Netflix last night and it was so like sad and depressing watching those kids. You really did that. see. Wow. That, what are the odds? Last night was my first episode of that. I haven't seen one in like over a year and it's I think so it was sad. on YouTube when I saw it and I was just Ugh. like, Oh my God, this is, and it was a women's prison. Yeah. Yeah. And they're they send girls. fucking hardcore, man. Don't go to jail, people. Just don't do illegal things. Yeah, there's nothing prideful about going. I'm, I'm glad I never run into cops at all, and I don't have any sort of bad record, because just getting pulled over for a ticket is just 
awful. It's okay. By you got itself. the uh, ultimate uh, anti police. You're white. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, that's awesome. That's awful. <laughs> uh, sorry, we're yeah, not racist. We might edit that one out. No. No, <laughs> staying in. <laughs> staying in. Uh, also, um, in big news that I want to mention, since we're talking about the internet, mm -hmm. the FCC, uh, which is uh, the federal something something, I don't know what I'm talking about, it's just <laughs> called the FCC, they are making a move to make the internet uh, not, because uh, the big debate, do you remember SOPA and PIPA and all these big acts that was going through, was trying to, what was happening is the government was deciding how they were going to classify the internet. Is it a utility, like cable, water? Uh, you know, electricity, or is it a, a product that needs to be, you know, divided up and you get more of it if you pay more or something? Because what they were trying to do is speed throttling, where the internet was going to get purchased. Uh, you were going to purchase the internet packages from like down to the websites you like going to mm -hmm. and have access to, and they were going to control the speeds of the internet that you got if you didn't pay more. Like, it sounds awful it's horrible it's horrible yeah. like okay i want to go to reddit oh well if you want fast access to reddit that's an extra two dollars a month you know like it's it's like fucking retarded and what it was also going to do is it was going to hurt the uh, like cartoon network could afford to buy a lot of bandwidth to show their stuff online uh and have easy access to have you like check a box to get cartoon network mm -hmm. but how would people watch us online they would never pay extra they would never pay verizon extra to go watch super commie Yes, you would. Yes, you would. But the point is, that would have really sucked, and it would have made mm -hmm. the little guys impossible to get like mm -hmm. any traction on the internet. It, you know, it'd be like, like you said, all the big companies they'd be basically monopolizing. They would fuck the entire the whole new internet. internet. Up. Yeah, the whole point of the internet is the best stuff comes to the top, mm -hmm. and it's a free exchange of information, mm -hmm. and it's a gigantic global community and a global culture, and you can't fucking put a price tag on access to that because it doesn't work that way. Uh, it's a free sharing of information. And so what the FCC is doing is they're making a move to classify the internet as a utility. So no company can own it. No company can speed throttle it. No company. Uh, it's just whoever's around, they have to give you the fastest internet. The other thing they're trying to define is a basic internet connection. What is the speed? We have about uh, 75 up, 25 down here, which is ball or fast. Yeah, internet. it's amazing. It's really fast. But they were uh, classifying, I think, 25 down, eight up which is pretty fast still. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Verizon and a few other companies are pissed. They're like, do not classify internet as that fast. It, but that's coming too. I think internet speeds like that fast uh, being mm -hmm. a standard are definitely coming. Oh yeah. Yeah. And so that's a, that's a thing that I was here heard about today. And I was like, man, I'm so glad the FCC uh, decided to back up net neutrality, mm -hmm. but the war's not over. I mean, we've had literally like five bills come through that almost killed the oh, internet. Yeah, this has been going on for a while. So I'm glad that uh, we're winning in mm -hmm. some ways because the FCC opened up a complaint page for about three months and they said they got like, over five million <laughs> the <negative>. fcc <laughs> getting complaints yeah well <laughs> it was a more a page they created specifically to ask what you think we should classify or do with the internet so they got five million responses saying don't you fuck up our internet bro so because it's also it, like i said it's creating a global culture it's a global mm -hmm. community and you can't the 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 big point is that you can freely you know go anywhere on it mm -hmm. and learn things and you would never go certain places because you just never pay the money to go look mm -hmm. so it would really fuck everything up and so I thought that was really cool. The FCC describing internet as something that will be a utility for all of us. Yeah, the internet. What would you do without the internet, Corey? Do you even watch TV that much anymore? No, that yeah. that's a funny thing. You know, ever since I started getting addicted to using online, YouTube, and all these other websites, my TV watching has plummeted. Yeah, like, mine too. And I mean, I used to be a big TV guy. Like, that was like my way to unwind every day. I, I watch two shows a week. Now. I explore Netflix and watch what I want at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. That's what I do. Now, I still get very disappointed when Netflix doesn't have things. Yeah. But I bet if you had a Netflix, an HBO Go, and a Hulu, and an Amazon account, you could watch pretty much anything you I want. mean, that's extreme first world problem right there. <laughs> I bet if you had five different accounts. You know, but that's an a la carte almost way of dealing with it. Like, mm -hmm. what do you want? Only pay for what you want. Exactly. You know, so it's a cool thing. Where mm -hmm. are we at on time, Corey? Uh, I have no idea. I don't even know where we Let started. me check. We're checking on the time here. Uh, but getting back... Uh, to uh, Netflix. Ten minutes. Hmm? Ten minutes, and then we'll be on an hour. Oh, Keep going. We've been, wow, it doesn't feel like that long. Yeah. 
Um, it's fun hanging out with you peoples on the internet. It is. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna skip the Netflix thing. I want to get to something else. Uh, something that's been really popular in the internet lately since we're talking about it. Um, one of the videos that was really popular for us in 2014 towards the end was Too Many Cooks. It was uh, an amazing cooks. viral video which was really Takes creepy and messed with your head. And uh, another video just came out this week which a lot of people are saying is trying to uh, ride the wave of Too Many Cooks. Or co- and uh, I'm still not quite sure how to feel about that yet because I think it's legitimately funny. But it's called Every 90s Commercial Ever. And I was really hoping I would be able to surprise you with that today. It sounds like, hey, have you seen Every night? Ni- nope, seen it. And I'm like, damn, damn it. it. I knew you'd be on top of that. <laughs> it probably hit the fir- front page of YouTube. Um, that and Facebook. It was all over the place. Yeah, but uh, I love this commercial because as someone who actually grew up in the 90s, mm-hmm. they got a lot of stuff right. You know, I-, I especially love the fact that the video can be watched in uh, the highest resolution possible uh-huh. that's even available on YouTube. And no matter what, it still looks like crap every single time. <laughs> so that's just a really funny joke on their part. But uh, it, it's, and it's a, four by three. It's not 16 by nine. It's yeah. A, it's yeah. A square. They, they did a really good job on uh, making sure it's just like the old videos. And, um, you know, it's a riff on uh, Capri Sun. Mostly. Is, yeah. You know, and, and in those pockets. old commercials. Not hot pockets. Uh, uh, what are those pizzas? <laughs> Uh, bagel bites, bagel bites, bagel okay. bites, yeah. you know, and um, what's funny is in those old commercials, they would drink them and then they would turn it into like a T-1000 liquid metal thing. They play sports, do extreme shit. And they took that premise and it was really freaky. I almost don't want to give it away if you haven't seen the video. Um, what's it called again? If they want to every 90s commercial ever. And well, anyway, what happens is they all turn into liquid metal and they mm-hmm. all go do something and everything starts to go very fucking wrong. Yeah, that's really all I want to say about <laughs> it. But it's it's really shocking. It's really disturbing. There's even an uncensored version, which Whoa. is even more disturbing. I don't need to see that. Um, it, it adds like two seconds, but it's just like, oh, my God, that's fucked up. Yeah. And um, a lot of people are saying that it's basically just the same thing as Too Many Cooks, where it starts out nice and wholesome and then de-evolves into nightmare fuel. Here's why I think it feels like too many cooks Mm -hmm. one it's called every 90s commercial ever and Mm -hmm. what is too many cooks every 90s sitcom intro ever Mm -hmm. with a dark twist what is this with a splash of 80s yeah with Mm -hmm. well there's some 80s in there but the point is you can easily define you can easily define uh too many cooks as every intro ever from the Mm -hmm. 90s and then this is every commercial from the 90s so it's kind of like the same riff it wouldn't have felt so different but it just got so dark you know, and that's, I think, also it got there it, quicker too. you know, too many cooks was like a slow burn that was like 10 minutes long. This every 90s commercial is two minutes long. <laughs> I guarantee you too many cooks took three times the work to make. Oh, know? no doubt. Yeah, no doubt. Just only just the amount of actors and shots and special effects, especially all the, the space shots and the everything. sound design and the music design. Oh, the probably sound. took forever. Definitely you know? the craziest. Yeah. Um, I still like the practical effects in this 90s commercial, though. Um, it's really and I creepy. Think it also has a famous football player in it. I'm not sure. I don't think he's famous. I think, I think he's, he's a famous football player. I think player. he's just a, a regular. I can't tell um, the kid. What does he call? He's, he's like, and they're at the park with Don Don Darius Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he says when they get all excited. And then, the, and then the mom comes over. Where are you going? And then the guitar. Like, it's yeah. just so classic. Oh, 90s. The sound design was very spot on. It mm-hmm. was like perfect. And that's just what I loved about it. And I really do want some big game pizza skins. The pizza on a football. Oh, no, I don't want that. <laughs> But uh, despite the fact that the video is getting some hate, it's doing really well. It's getting posted all over the place. I actually saw it from a horror website because, you know, I'm a big horror movie. But oh, uh, the, the place the that I go, I've been actually going to for years. It's called bloody disgusting dot com. Uh-huh. It's a website that's been around for over 10 years. It's insane. Um, but that's where I saw it. It was on their front page. And even the name of their article when they put it up was like uh, too many cooks inspired video yeah. will give you nightmares <laughs> and uh you know because they always love putting that type of stuff up there um but i loved it i thought it was funny if you guys want to check it out we'll put a link for that video in the description box below make sure and watch it right before you go to bed yeah dude it's uh it was very funny but i immediately even without reading too many cooks inspired me i was like oh this is a too many cooks thing you know i gotta see where they were coming from mm-hmm. i still think too many cooks is better but it's a good uh good way to scratch that itch if you want another too many cooks dose mm-hmm. i say bring it on man who cares too many cooks started a thing go mm-hmm. for it you know yeah. i don't have a problem with it i think the people that are complaining about that are stupid mm. they don't have any no reason to Absolutely all right not. uh another question for you did you like the newest godzilla movie i i like the last part of it i liked brian cranston i didn't like how he got killed off so quick mm-hmm. and then uh it got me excited for the sequel that's what it got me It felt like a Mm -hmm. warm up. I mean, as someone who works kind of like in the film industry and everything, you know, you've seen how these productions work and how directors uh, work, filmographers. Uh, Did you think uh, Gareth Edwards did a pretty good job on that movie? I think that the movie felt 
the way a Godzilla film should feel because it mm-hmm. feels like from the perspective of a person. It's not this big zoomed out helicopter shot the whole time of these two monsters clashing and no perspective on the buildings. And, the, you know, like even uh, it was very unrealistic that the main guy kept almost dying, but not actually even getting hurt. Mm-hmm. You know, like he got crushed in a, in a fucking train. He got flipped off. He jumped out of planes. He was right physically next to the main monster fucking with its shit. And it didn't even kill him. Like it's a little unrealistic, mm-hmm. you know. He, he hid in the mountains from it as it was. I don't know. It was just ridiculous. It got mm-hmm. to a point where it's like, nah, that dude needs to be dead by now. Mm-hmm. And so kind of a kind of a silly big budget Hollywood Godzilla movie that despite the fact that it didn't really please everyone was still a pretty satisfying experience. And what I loved about it is this brand new director, uh, Ed, uh, Gareth Edwards. He's kind of a new guy. He's just been attached to a brand new Star Wars film, which is going to be the spinoff series. Not only are they making episodes seven, eight and nine but they're going to be making spinoff movies in between each one. And the first one was just announced with an actress by the name of Felicity Jones, and Gareth Edwards will be directing that movie. And I'm pumped. Well, he's good. He's definitely proven himself. I don't Mm -hmm. know why he couldn't do that. You know, he had a good vision all the way through Godzilla. Mm -hmm. Uh, I also thought the way the monsters expressed, like, their power and stuff was really well done. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it just felt like a Godzilla movie, Mm -hmm. but more serious. And, uh, you know, this is going to be different from them, especially because this isn't just a Star Wars movie. It's a uh, a spinoff Star Wars movie, and the main story is supposed to be about a heist going to the Death Star. At least that's what's been revealed so far. During the originals? I believe so. It, it, it could be the only time if they're actually going to go uh, on a heist to the Death Star, but it's got this brand new actress in it. Uh, I've never heard of her. I've seen her before. Her name is Felicity Jones. That name sounds super familiar. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what's, honestly, the na- what's the movie called? Uh, that's the thing. They haven't even released uh, a name for the movie yet. It's just going to be the uh, the Star Wars spinoff movie. And everybody's trying to come up with theories about who this character could be, how she's involved. And I'm just really interested to see if these standalone movies are literally going to be just that, standing on their own, or if they're somehow going to tie into the brand new movie series or possibly tie into the older movies. I still think it's incredibly bold because, you know, you got to really think about it. We're getting six new Star Wars movies. Oh, yeah. When really we only needed three and we didn't even really need that. So this is insane there. You know, Disney's really taking advantage of the fact that they just bought this big new franchise. They paid almost like a billion dollars for it. So mm-hmm. I, if I was them, I'd get my money back. That's what they're doing mm-hmm. as fast as possible. They're like, give us that. And, and I was telling you this, too, the other day on the phone, too. If the, w- These brand new Star Wars movies that are coming out and it's owned by Marvel. Marvel owns DC. Even if they don't connect, even if it doesn't technically make sense, just put them as cameos. Put the Guardians in the Galaxy in the background somewhere. Hanging out at a bar. doing just Even if they're doing there. nothing. I just want to be able to see them. And even though it doesn't fit because they're Marvel characters, I don't care. You own the properties. Put them together. They gel together perfectly. I, and the other thing is, like, you look at Star Trek and then you look at Star Wars. Star Wars' universe is much more advanced because mm-hmm. there's, like, these galactic economies and no one – like spaceships are just thing. like you need to be on the spaceship to be alive in Star Trek and stuff, mm-hmm. you know, but like they got like really cool. They're just exploring ca- planets and there's all these uh, set up areas that they just walk around on Star Wars, you mm-hmm. know, but like that doesn't really exist on Star Trek. Mm-hmm. But uh, the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy is kind of the same world. So like you said, they just merge so well together. Mm-hmm. Why not? Just throw them in the background. I just think it would be a funny cameo. Yeah, it would be. Mm-hmm. I heard that the uh, when they remade the first three, there was a scene where the Backstreet Boys were in the back fighting as Jedis, but uh, they cut it. <laughs> I have never heard of that. You didn't. I Google that shit, man. Google it. Backstreet Boys, Star Wars. You know, I know, I know a lot about some of that obscure or, Star Wars. That or NSYNC. I forgot. It was a, one of the uh, big boy bands uh, in the early 2000s. This is going to blow my mind if this is true. Like, I can't believe you didn't know that. What Star Wars could have been? Yeah. It's funny. The first thing, <laughs> first thing that comes up is that one classic video of Star Wars at Disney World dancing. With uh, they have that now. Like oh the, yeah, 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 that, that thing they do. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> but I don't, I don't see anything quite yet. Try but. and sync then. I could have swore it was Backstreet Boys. Are you searching Backstreet Boys? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm doing in sync right now. In sync because they're in, they're in sync. Get it? Okay. Uh, movie legends. Here we go. Yeah, that's what it was. Oh, uh, it was in sync. Okay. They were nearly. Holy shit. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine. <laughs> not only is this true. Imagine JT in the back dancing with a lightsaber. I mean, this know? is not only true, but there are fucking pictures of oh, these guys. It exists. In these costumes. Although. Oh, no, no, no. I'm wrong. I'm looking at this picture right now, which is absolutely <laughs> hilarious. All right. 
So this must have been some sort of thing because there's this shot of all of these Saturday Night Live cast members dressed up as Obi-Wan Kenobi, but their actual physical appearances make them look like NSYNC. I'm literally looking at Jimmy Fallon dressed as Obi-Wan, <laughs> dressed as Justin Timberlake. <laughs> so that they made fun of it. So it, well, it had to have been real. It had to be I mean, even real. Chris Kattan is right there next to him in full on, like, you know, over the top mode. Like this is this must have happened quite some time ago. But the, it just seeing that image right there is funny. They and there's a got, few other images. It's yeah. funny. Uh, Saturday Night Live just got the uh, cast of Saved by the Bell back together into a skit. So I thought that's kind of funny. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, just type uh, uh, Saturday Night Live, uh, Saved by the Bell. I'm sure we don't have to watch it. Yeah. I don't want to watch it, mm. but uh, it, go check it Do out. Do you like Saved by the Bell? It, it helped me pass time before I got on the bus in the morning. <laughs> That's everybody's answer. Nobody ever, yeah, I like to save by the bell. Nah. No, it, it's what was on before I left, yeah. and it came on every morning. Um, That's, about That's it. definitely one of those shows that has not aged well. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, it's a Jimmy Fallon thing. Oh, Jimmy Fallon. OK. Did. Oh, OK. All right. Yeah, I'm going to have to. I already see. I already see A.C. Slater right there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what those what those actors have done since that show has been either. Well, either nothing or bad things. Uh, for the most part, I haven't heard things too good about Dustin Diamond, who played Screech. I, mean, I actually he, think he, he was arrested a little while ago. Yeah, he, he went through a lot of bad things, and he released a sex tape. Uh, who the fuck wants to see Screech <laughs> fuck? <laughs> it was him and uh, this chick, or two chicks, I forgot. Do you think when he's having sex, he screeches? No, he probably doesn't. <laughs> and and then and then uh, also, there's Showgirls, which the uh, curly-haired chick did. Curly-haired chick. I remember uh, there was the one main female lead i think the actress's name was tiffany amber Thiessen. who was hot as hell Let's still is as far as i'm concerned she, she was she on this one show i remember back in the on day g4 that, it wasn't on g4 i think they may have put reruns on it on g4 but it was originally on fox it put me through puberty back in the day um it was called i think fast lane fast lane and there was this one episode where i distinctly remember and it was awkward as hell uh, i was in the the den watching it i clearly shouldn't have been watching it, it was late night and it was the scene where Tiffany, Tiffany Amber Thiessen was making out with this other chick. Whoa. Don't know why. Mom walks right in. What the fuck are you watching? And I have to explain this awful show to her. And it's completely awful. But I'll never forget it. That's the one episode of Fastlane. <laughs> <laughs> I will never forget. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm going to have to check out this Saved by the Bell video. This, we'll watch this, it after we finish yeah, the podcast. This looks ridiculous. I kind of want to see that. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys, I think we have reached the end of our third episode of the Powerful Nerdcast. Thank you guys so much for watching uh, or listening. Uh, we are working on getting this son of a bitch on iTunes. It's become a little more complicated than we thought, and it costs money. We didn't know that, man. We didn't know we had to pay to do things. Yeah. Fucking YouTube's free, damn it. Yeah. But you can still tune in for yeah. our broadcast videos. Yes. And uh, make sure to watch the previous episodes, episodes one and two. They deserve your love and your attention. We always appreciate you guys watching and listening, whatever you may do. A lot of people leave comments like, oh, I just put this on while I do homework. And that's cool. You know, I guess that's kind of something you can do with uh, when you're just listening to something. You don't mm -hmm. have to watch it like a video. But mm -hmm. there is also this video. Uh, if you want to see us open our mouth holes repeatedly and mm -hmm. make content, that's, that's a good description, right, Corey? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Very accurate. Very accurate. So, again, you guys, thank you so much for watching. If you do like these videos, make sure and give them a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. If you want to support us, donate to the PayPal link or just use our Amazon associate link. It just takes you to Amazon as normal. But if you buy something through that link, it helps us out. And then always, if you really want to help us out, watch the videos and tell your friends. That's pretty much the best thing you can do. So until next time, the powerful Nerdcast is out.